And every Sunday morning they come in, they're just like, who is it gonna she's gonna call my name? You know what they are. <laughs> they're in the day. <laughs> no, I shouldn't say anything. You know. Otherwise they will get it. Next Sunday. Yeah. Next Sunday, rest of them, just one time. Okay? And you have to thank you. Praise the Lord. Well, God is good. Before I do, I would like to introduce you to the team that who has come from the water. Pastor Corey, would you like to stand up? And uh, would you like to come for me? Come and share. Come. Come and share with us why you made all this trip all the way here. Okay? Well, good morning, everybody. How are you doing? Yeah, we drove all the way from um, the Saskatchewan border. We're from Alberta, a little place called Chauvin. Actually, if you, uh, if you want to go on our website, you can check it out. It's uh, www.middleofnowhere.ca. No joke, it really is. Yeah, www.middleofnowhere.ca, and that'll show you where we are. We are literally in the middle of nowhere. Uh, but you know, um, uh, we used to live in Edmonton one time, and uh, we've had some opportunities to work at Inner City Church, and we just really enjoyed it. And then um, we had heard about Potter's Place Mission from some different uh, people that have been here before, some friends of ours that have been here. So we wanted to be, we just wanted to come and be a part of it and see what God was doing over here in Vancouver. So uh, we are so blessed to be here. We're excited. We're going to be here. Uh, we leave again on Thursday morning. Uh, we've got a really long drive. It took us 12 hours to get to Kamloops. Is it Kamloops? So yeah, so we stayed in Kamloops, and then uh, we left Kamloops, and then we drove here. And we got here yesterday, I think, at about 3 o'clock, maybe? I don't know. We were driving a lot. That's all I know. But it was great. It's great to be here, and uh, we're, we're just so privileged and humbled by what you guys are doing. And we just we just wanted to serve and help out where we can and do what we can. So thanks for having us. Uh, it's a real privilege for us to be here. And yeah, we'll do whatever we can to help out. So God bless you. And uh, yeah, we'll see you again later. I want all the team to just stand up from the, the top, please. Yeah. These are the team that just has arrived yesterday. Let's give them a big round. I know what it means to be driving so many hours. Whenever we travel, we travel. Well, we went to Burnsley how many hours? 17 hours to we'll drive from here to there. That's not so bad. If we go all the way to Paris, it will be more. And from Paris, we drive another three hours going into the you know, niche condition. It's like, ah, crazy driving, like 20 hour driving. You know? And uh, I drove once all the way from here to Yukon, okay, in Whitehorse, 30 hours, oh, 30, 36 hours, something like that. So, oh, that was good. <laughs> that was good. So I know what it means to driving all the way, you know, but. Uh, so people like us who are trained is okay, but the kids, I know it's not easy, but that's where you will receive the grace of the Lord, amen? You see the blessing, okay. Turn with me to Luke chapter 24, verse 1 to 7. Let's hear the word of God, okay? Luke 24, verse 1 to 7. Let us speak together, okay? On the first day of the week, very early in the morning, the woman took the spice, uh, spices they had prepared and went to the tomb. They found a stone rolled away from the tomb, but when they entered, they did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. While they were wondering about this, suddenly two men, in, uh, two men in cloth, they gleamed like a light, lightning stood beside them. And they are Fight, the woman fell down with their face to the ground, but the men said to them, Why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here, he has risen. Remember how he told you while he was still with you in Galilee. The Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men, be crucified, and on the third day be raised again. Amen. Jesus Christ is resurrected. He's not in the tomb. Amen? Amen? He is resurrected. He's no longer in the tomb. We see in this story, these two women went to look for the Christ in the tomb. They were looking for the dead Christ. They were looking for the, the dead body of Christ. So that they can able to put the spices in his body. But they find none. Why? Because Jesus wasn't there. Jesus wasn't there. He was already risen. 
Amen? The resurrection day is the, the most wonderful and greatest day for the whole believers. If it wasn't the resurrection day, today you and I wouldn't sit in here. Amen? Amen? Today you weren't able to call him as a Abba Father. And you don't have to have this. Uh, today you wouldn't have the salvation in your life because of his resurrection. Okay? If Jesus wasn't resurrected, you and I today, we were still sitting in the outside of the tomb and looking for something. But because he's resurrected. And today, but it is still in the world today, still people are looking for the body of Christ. They're still going to the dead tomb and looking for the dead body of Christ. But let me tell you, you and I, we know the truth. He's no longer going to tomb, he's resurrected. Amen? And then, what is resurrection all about? What is it? Number one. The resurrection is all about the victory over death. Amen? Why we say res resurrection is so great and wonderful? Because it given us the power. It's no longer that death can have power over us, but now even the death is no more. Okay? Even the death is no more threat to the believers. Why? Turn to the first Corinthians 15, verse 54. It says, when the perishable has been clothed with the imperishable and the mortal with the immortality, then, this, then the saying that it is written will come true. That has been swallowed up. That has been swallowed up in victory. So they have a that all oh, death, where's your sting? Where's your power? Even that has no more power over believers. You see, if you're not a believer, you don't know who Christ is. You will live in the fear of our future because you don't know what's going to happen to you. But because of Jesus' resurrection, He not only given us a whole disaster, all that stuff, but first of all, He took us fear away from us. He given us the victory. Amen? That you and I have no more fear. I have many young people say, well, wait a minute, Pastor. I don't know what's happening to my life. I don't know what's going to happen to my future. But I want to live for a long time. Hey, I hope so. But you never know. Okay? You never know. If all of us know when we leave this world, if you know exactly what time you're going to leave this world, then bless is for, the blessing is for you. But you don't know. You don't know. But believers, we don't care. The thing is this, non-believers, they're living with the field, but from the believers, we don't care. Whether we live today, or we live 10 years later, or 50 years later, or even 70 years later. We don't care, it doesn't matter why. Because as soon as we move out of this world, we're studying the new, okay? That's why, I look at this verse five in the loop, it said, why do you looking for the living among the dead? This is what I just said. More people are looking for that every day. Okay? How many of you know? He, you and I know that he is alive. That's right. Amen. But yet these people come to the, the tomb with the sad faces. Who is these people? Non believer? No, they are believers. <coughs> They're the follower of Jesus. And Jesus told them what's going to happen. And yet, they knew up here, they know knowledgeably, but they don't really fully understood what's going to happen. That's why they came to the tomb. That's why they were looking for Jesus there. Many of us like that. We have knowledge. We try to understand Jesus with the knowledge. This is a, even our students, uh, these Korean students coming here, they may know Christ with the knowledge, but not with really experience in his heart. And we like that. Many of us know Christ up here. Huh? We know He's a Savior. Oh yeah, He's God. Yeah, He can help us. Do you really know He can help you? Do you really see that He's healing in your life? Did you really see the, how His blessings? Huh? Do you? If you say, no pastor, I haven't seen the, the real blessing, how God is blessing then I'm so sorry. You will like this poor woman. So looking for Jesus in the tomb. But he's not in that tomb. He's up. He's resurrected. He's alive. You can look for continuously. But he's right here. We, are, we say the song, Holy Spirit, rain down. Rain down. As he comes, he begins to teach us. 
what it means. What it means to be a believer. What it means to have Christ as Lord and Savior. What it means to be uh, His disciples. Amen? This woman continued to look him for. Until, until, what happened? Until the angel said to them, right? Until the angel reminds them. I don't think it's just angel reminds them. I think when they were speaking to angel, something boom has taken place in their heart. They begin to understand. Huh? They begin to understand. See, they saw the angel. They saw. When angel began to tell, they begin to not only have knowledge, but understand of the truth. You may read the Bible, but you don't, you don't have a spirit of God that gives you to understand. You cannot understand. Become just a knowledge, become another word, another black, you know, writing, right? Sometimes, having a lot of knowledge, knowledge is good. But if you know how to apply the knowledge, otherwise, more knowledge will only give you the fear. Because you know too much. You know too much. And you don't know how to apply it, then all you do is giving you the fear. And often knowledge also, if you only put as knowledge as the, the priority, it gives you also doubt. Because there are so many different kinds of knowledge in the world. Do you know that? What, which one are you going to believe? You go to see the highest scholars. They don't believe God. How to believe God? The too much of knowledge, too much big head. They cannot understand. Sometimes we do that. We put in all the things on our knowledge. You think, I know. Do you know? We say, I know. People have a PhD, people have two, three PhDs. You go and tell them, do you know Jesus' resurrection? They say, how can that man rise? That's what they will tell you. Oh, that's only a story from the Bible. Really? What does this resurrection mean to you? What does the resurrection do to you? Have done to your life? We have to understand, number one, that it gives us the victory over death and victory over everything. You have, to, you have no more living in the fear and doubt, but now you can able to have that fellowship with God. Not a dead God, but a living God. You know, in the world, how many people are worshipping the idols? Don't throw the stone on me when I say this, okay? Sometimes we wonder why things happen like that in Japan. Okay? Japan has so many earthquakes every year. Okay? Many, many earthquakes. Small to big to you know. But we ask questions, why does it happen? And why it also happened in Indonesia, remember? Why this thing happen? If you're looking at the both place, their commonality. What commonality? The idol worship. Do you know in Japan how many millions of them? We say India have two million them. Okay? Two millions. Japan, everything is God. Okay, everything. Tree is God. If you make something, that also be a God. Okay? Everything, they have to make more than their hand, put it in their own house, and they worship God. That is their God. You say, oh, are you saying that because of the Japan got this much problem? I don't know. Why not? This is a nation that has no God in there. They say Christianity is 0.003%. <laughs> Think about it. Not even 1%. Canada? How many percent? How many, how many percent do you think, Pastor Corey? 5%. Are you sure? How many are born again there? <laughs> now you cannot tell me. Yeah, maybe all Catholic, Anglican, everything we put five percent. Who are the really born again and understand the God the way you and I understand God? Huh? There are a lot more people know God with the knowledge, still looking for Jesus in the tomb. But we don't. We don't. We know. Who he is. He, we know he's resurrected. And we begin to have that fellowship with him. Amen? Amen. The resurrection, one other thing that has given to us is the greatest joy. 
He said, Matthew 28, he said, So the woman hurried away from the tomb, afraid yet filled with joy. Afraid yet filled with the joy. Without God in your life, what's going on? You're looking for joy with the, all the all the things, okay? The, with the money that you can buy, right? Why? Looking for joy. They want a peace of mind. Huh? Use money to do everything. You say, what do you mean by that? Like, just just looking, looking around the history. Why do you think that people continue to using the drugs and they're doing what they're doing? They just want to find peace of mind. All they want is just momentarily forget about everything. Okay? They want to stay in that state. Don't care anything. That's why they're doing it. See, but when Jesus came, when Jesus resurrected, He gave us the job, the full satisfaction in our heart. You don't need other things to boost you up. You don't need all those, the world looking for those things to boost you up. Because Jesus gave you the real joy, real satisfaction. How do you get that? Very simple. Allow Him to come and be the Lord of your life. Think about this. Why crazy people like me, like Pastor Cody, driving 17, 18 hours down to the, you know, uh, uh, Vancouver and serving God for what? Are we, are we crazy? <laughs> huh? Is it because there's so much money in there for us? No. Simple. All because of resurrection. Christ. Okay, resurrection. By Christ. If it wasn't He resurrected, and wasn't He giving us the full satisfaction, wasn't He giving us the deep, deep joy that flowed from the deep within, we were not doing this. And you weren't sitting here today either. Right? Yes. Because of resurrection of Christ, He brought us this full satisfaction. He brought us that full joy. See, he, those women, was, they were afraid, and yet they were filled with the joy. This is what it is. When you come to the presence of God, you may be afraid, you may have that godly fear in you, yet you have a full confidence in you that He loves you, that all the sins of you has been washed away. How many of us can enter into the presence of God with a full amount of sin? You cannot. You cannot even enter there. You can't even go near there. Your sin Lock it. The ask to going into the presence of God. But when we have Jesus, because of his resurrection, now we can boldly, confidently go into the presence of God and say, Lord, even though I am a sinner, even though this is what I but because of your blood of your son, I can be here. This morning actually uh, this morning. There was Ten Commandments in the TV, you know, and I was just flipped through it and I saw there was a sin is this. When uh, Israelite was living, before they're leaving, they put the blood of lamb on the doorpost, right? And, and Joshua, this is only the movie, okay? Joshua went to put the blood of a lamb on the house of the, uh, the, the governors, you know? Which this governor is a sucker of Jews, okay? Sucker of Israelites. And he said, a traitor of uh, their own, okay? And yet, Joshua go there and bleed the blood of lamb. And the death, spirit of death doesn't pass. No, it, it passed through. Okay, It doesn't go into the their house, but it passed through. And I was looking at that and I said, wow, what a truth. All Joshua did is put the blood of lamb on the doorpost of the governor. Even though it's a traitor. Okay? Yet when he put it in there, that and your pastor. What does it say? Just look at the blood of Jesus in us. It's not about the how much of a sin that we have committed. The blood of Jesus in us. That's what makes us. Okay? That's what resurrection has done. That's what resurrection has done for us. The woman had a woman went in there and when found Nobody of Jesus, what, did, what, what, what was going on in their heart? They were sad. They were weeping. Scripture said they were crying. He said, where? He then looked to the God and said, where do you put the body?
body of my Lord. Where did you took it? Why are you stolen it? Where is it? They were crying. But soon as when they realized what was happening, they were having joy. The great joy in their heart. This is us, you know. When you don't have God in your life, what's happening? There's nothing but a sadness. You can, yes, but you can go and make yourself happy by buying things and do things. But the deepest joy and happiness does come. It doesn't come through money or things that you do. <coughs> not the physical, not the those of a money power. It's not going to give it to you. Only Jesus. When you know the Lord, He will give you that. Thirdly, what does the resurrection have done? He given us the power. Acts chapter 2. Okay? Acts chapter 2, verse 38. You will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. You will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. It's all because of resurrection. Okay? He said, when He comes, He said, in verse Chapter 1, verse 8, he said, But you will receive power when he comes on you. Giving you the power. Resurrection? Yes, Christ is risen. Yes, he's overcome the death. Yes, not only he did given us the, the, the you know, victory over death, but he gave us joy. But now, that's it? He gave us joy and shall we stop there? No, he gave us power. For what purpose? So you can put on the, your earring and say, oh, I got power? No. Is it just uh, your another access? Oh, I speak in tongues of how spiritual I am? No. Why are you giving us the power? What was the purpose? Some say, oh, pastor, you have power, but I'm just uh, you know, a small fish, and therefore I don't have the power. Really? Does the Holy Spirit only work with the pastors and doesn't work with the congregation? Is it pastors of the Holy Spirit is bigger than the your Holy Spirit? Of course not. Of course not. He gave us the same power. And to me, to you, and to you, and to you, to all of us. For what purpose? So we can have another accessory in our Christian life? No, it's to give you power so you can go out and you can be witness. That was the purpose. Why do we do what we do? Why are we here? Why not in the nice place and have a church? Why here? And why are we having people going out to the mission trip all the time? Why are people coming from my order to here? Why? This is a purpose. This is the whole point. Whole purpose. He given us the power to go and be his disciple, be his witness. It's not about you. Some say, but pastor, you know, I don't want to do it. You know, I like to only be here. I want to be like Mary. Just sit on the feet of Jesus and just say, fat, 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 fat. Let me tell you, if I feed you so much, you're going to become so fat and you're going to... What, what's going to happen? Uh, you can't even run. You can't even walk. You can't even do anything. Do you see all the fat babies? Can't move. Can't turn itself. It can't even turn itself. They have to turn for them. That's what we become. So I say, oh, but pastor, I don't want to go out. I want to just stay. You know, I like it well, what I'm doing. And let me just do what I'm doing. Like, hey, who's missing out? You're missing out. Right. And when you go, when you go, something happens. Like this time in our team, and there's so much of spiritual uh, warfare was happening. Half the first time. First time, how many years without ministry? You know? I remember once when Pastor Donald was driving a white van, that time was a really bad van, okay, really, really, really lousy van, you got it? And we drove all the way, I don't know where, maybe like a Prince George or somewhere, they, they, they were driving in the night. Suddenly so some car came and said, you know, bah, 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 bah. Said, what happened? I said, something is happening there. I said, so what? Fire, you know? So she stopped the car and ran out. There was a fire in the behind, but yet, we didn't have this kind of problem, yet God sent the you know, right <laughs> people and they were able to fix it then and there and continue on. Right? And this is the second time our car broke down halfway. And they had to turn around and come back to catch it. And they got stuck there for how many hours? Four hours? And when they called me, this has happened. I called the uh, no, sister, Deborah, I said, pray. 
all you need to do is pray. Just start interceding. This is a spiritual warfare. The devil is doing something. The devil doesn't want you to go there. Why? Because the devil don't want people to come and share their life with the people, bring them the good news, news that bring, giving them a new hopes. Of course they don't want it. They try to discourage as much as possible. I don't know how, how many hours did you drive that day? 19 hours? 17 hours? 17. Oh, 17 hours. Oh. Normally I drive there like 12 hours. Okay? Yeah. <coughs> no, after Prince George only I can go there by 10, 10, 10 hours, less than 10 hours. Yeah. Then from there to Burns Lake, 2 hours, a maximum 12 hours. This is what devil does. Right? Why? Because given us power to go, uh, give us that deep, deep learning to go and the share. It doesn't matter how big, how small church. Uh, some say, how many guys do? You guys so little people. It's okay. Go. We don't, you know, you know what happened? I got all our team, 15, 16 of them gone, and I said, huh? How are we going to have prayer meeting? <laughs> Guess what? <laughs> On that day, that week, when they left Wednesday, we have another about 20 people came from out of nowhere. We prayed together. I thought, oh, how are we going to have prayer meeting? I, I was thinking maybe only me and my husband and brother Ben, and just maybe a couple of us, right? No! We had a bunch of people came. Prayer, why? Because God wants us to continue to pray on Friday nights. You know? This is what it is. God has given us the power to go. This is all about the resurrection. If it wasn't the resurrection, you and I wouldn't have to go there. We have no earning to go there and share the good news. We have no desires. But because of His resurrection power, because of He has given us that spirit, we, can, we have desires to go. Even people say, don't go. No, we want to go. You got no way. No, it's okay. Just go. Why? God prepared the ways. Amen. And God has never, never been a stage with us uh, when people travel, you know. This time, Pastor Nan came to me and said, you know what, we spent so much. And then, maybe we should cancel all, you know, the coming uh, trip because we spent so much this time. I said, forget it, we're going to go. We are still going. Why? Because this is what God asked us to go. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Amen. You know, why give us power? It's not for you to keep it and not for you to boast in how good you are. It's for you to go. Okay? And the Matthew 28, 19 say, Therefore go and make disciples of all nations. Okay? Of all nations, not only some, but all nations. You baptize them. You know? He said, You baptize them. Some say only pastors can baptize them. He said, No. Last time when they were in the football uh, right? Go and baptize. The pastor of the authority said, Can I baptize? Sure. I don't you. Go baptize. Go and do it. Why not? Some say, I'm not pastor. Yeah, go ahead. If you have no tool, you have nobody, no pastor there, you go and you baptize, you go, you bury. <laughs> if necessary. Why? Because he has given you the power. Huh? You don't have to go four years Bible school and another three years of master's program. Then only you are qualified to do. No. He given us the power and he said, go and then for you make the disciples. You baptize them. Huh? And you send them. You go. That's what you're supposed to do. How many of you have been baptized? Okay. Wrong question. How many of you not baptized? Let me see your name. You are not baptized, brother? Come, we will baptize you in the water. Okay? Just, if you are not baptized, do it just before the week. Okay, let's do it in summer. You know why I say? We baptize in the sea. <laughs> yeah, we have a uh, crab pot uh, uh, sea there. And I don't want to say that Christmas, I tell you, it's not funny, okay? It's not funny. Christmas, on December 25th, you go into the water, sea water, see what's going to happen to you. Just try. Just try. Feels really good. Feels really good. 
You know what it means when a needle, you know, going through all of your skins, you know? That's what you feel. And very soon, no time you feel numb. <laughs> you feel numb. On um, December 25th, you in the sea water trial. Okay, come and share with me. Okay? It's really wonderful things to do. But please, I beg you, no, don't get baptized during winter, okay? Amen. Summer. Summer. Yeah, just for summer, okay? And, and the fall, that's still okay, but not in the winter. Amen? So, resurrection. Jesus is resurrected. What is going to you, Christmas? Think about it. What is going to you? If it wasn't He was resurrected, I would be still in sinful life. I would be still out there living my life. Not only He gave me power over death, not only He gave me joy, not only He used me as vessel to reach out and touch the people, but He's got bigger things for me. If Jesus wasn't resurrected, you and I have, have no hopes whatsoever. But today, I want you to think about what it means to you. What this resurrection means to you. Is that oh, just another accessory to you? Or just, well, I'm saved because Jesus. No, it's not just you saved. It's more than that. It's more than that. It's your personal, personal relationship with the mighty God. How many of you ever think about this? People are seeking for God. People want God to talk to them. Uh, people are going to the mountain and praying, praying, praying that, that God somehow will speak to them. But you and I today, God is in you and He wants to deeper the relationship with you. Uh, but we put God aside. We put God aside. We put everything on us. But God is always on the second. Today, I want you to think about this. This is Resurrection Day. What does it mean to you? Will you come to say, God, I'm willing to give full of my life to you. I'm willing to give all to you and surrender to you and put you in the first into my life as you have done what you have done for me and I'm willing to do it. You need to tell the Lord. Amen? You need to speak to God and say, Lord, take my life. You allowed yourself to die. And he was crucified for me. He was gone through all the agony for me. Now he's resurrected. Why? Because you love me. Because of his resurrection, I am what I am. But Lord, I don't want to put you on the second plane anymore. I want to put you first in my life. I want to follow your ways. I want to, I want to please you every day. And so therefore, Lord, come. Lord, you speak to me today. And I want you to speak to him. Okay? I want, I want a, 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 a Pastor Michael and uh, Brother Ben to come and help me about the communion. And as this communion is passing through, I want you to hold in your hand. Okay? If you're not a Christian, don't take it. Okay? And I want you to just take it until this has come to you. I want you to bow your head. Okay? And I want you to think about what I'm saying. If it wasn't the resurrection where you would be, because of the resurrection of God, Christ, we are nice to him today. But what will you say to him if he is here today? Hmm? If he's standing right in front of you, what will you say to him? I want you to talk to him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want you to come and meet his resurrected Christ. I want you to come and worship him. But first of all, you need to say, Lord, come, come to me. And Lord, you speak to me. Ask the Lord to speak to you. He wants to touch you today. He's not only giving you the power over death. He's he not only giving you the joy. He's not only giving you the power to go out. But He wants to come and dwell and work with you. He wants you to worship Him. And He wants to be there with you. And I want you to meet this Christ today. And those who know him, I want you to meet him in a new, fresh way. And say, Lord, you come. And Lord, you touch me. Lord, you come and you touch me. Tell the Lord. Lord, you refresh me. You refresh my spirit today. Because I want to be in your presence. I want our worship leader to come and help you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
Hallelujah. And as you're holding the envelope, I want you to pray. I want you to look into yourself and say, Lord, talk to Lord. Say, thank you. Thank you for saved me. Thank you for your saving grace. Tell the Lord, the Lord, just show me now in a deeper way. Lord, you really sing to my heart in a deeper way. Tell the Lord, He wants to do deeper things in you today. Oh, my God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And I want you to hold the envelope, don't take it yet. We're going to do it all together. And everybody has it. Amen? Meanwhile, I want you to just reflect yourself. Hallelujah. Please lock the door. Now it's a very important moment. Let the Spirit of God just come and work in us. Amen? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, Spirit of God, come. Lord, come. Lord, you move among us. Lord, you speak to us. Lord, you reveal to us right now. Oh, As you come to the table, table of God, I want you to look into yourself. And bring all to the Lord. Say, Lord, you know my anger. You know my unforgiving. You know that my heart was my friend. And you know that my frustration. How do you just tell the Lord? And ask the Lord to cleanse you before you partake in this communion. Okay? Because scripture says nobody comes to the table of God in my worthy manner. You're looking into yourself. Every year you need to make right with God, do it so right now. Kira Mashanda Rabakas. Oh Jesus. Kira Rabakas. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, Ramashanda Rabakas. Hallelujah. 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 As Brother Daniel sings, I'm just looking into yourself for a moment. I don't want to hurry this. I'm going to tell you to take time and tell the Lord. All your frustration, give to the Lord. Say, Lord, you receive me. Lord, you renew me. That's just me. My thought towards the serpent's evil, Lord, you cleanses me right now. Cleanses my thought. Tell the Lord. Tell the Lord. Tell the Lord. Tell the Lord. Father, you touch us. Spirit of God, come. Renew us. Cleanses us. That nothing, Father, nothing will hold us. We come to you, Lord. Come into your presence, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. I'm catching my shadow. You hold me close. Send me a promise. I know God is holding me. I reveal to everything. The Lord loves to us to go into your presence. For the Russian man cleanses us. Cleanses us. Cleanses us. Oh, 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 oh,
for I receive from the Lord, but I also pass it on to you. The Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, he took the bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. If it wasn't the crucifixion, there would be no resurrection. But Christ has done this for you. And therefore you and I can come to him boldly. Today you have the blood of Jesus. And I want you to put there, hold this bread for a moment. This is just simply a bread that signifies the blood of Jesus. That broken body of Jesus. If his body wasn't broken on that day, you and I would have the blood of Jesus in us. So I want you to eat this. We're going to eat together and we're going to remember the crucifixion day, the body of Jesus was broken for you. So let us just rise up from where you are, and I'll let you be there, okay? Let us drink it together. Amen. Oh. 
Hallelujah. I want you to just thank the Lord. Let's just thank the Lord. Say thank you. Thank you, Lord. Praise Him. Give Him the praise. Give Him the glory. Say, Lord, I thank you.
Can we sing the uh, chorus song, please? Let's we sing this song together. We call this as our chorus theme song, okay? Hallelujah. And I want you to tell the Lord and say, Lord, this is my, com my confession to you. Amen. Yeah. 